Hello, and welcome to this video where we're going to be talking about fetching data. Uh, what fetching data means is basically that you use Python to uh, take data from an online source using an API uh, and get it down on your computer. Uh, so it's like out in the real world. Uh, there are, there's lots of data, uh, lots of very useful data. Uh, and some nice people sometimes store it online for everybody to access. Uh, and uh, here, some other nice people have made very nice tools uh, in Python for you to easily access this data uh, at your at your leisure. Uh, and I'm gonna show you like a few of the methods you can use to do this. Um, so yeah, first off, we need to install a package made by. Uh, Alessandro, uh, who's some, um, someone who's working in the Danish National Bank for Yebbe Mills, who has made a uh, package for downloading data from uh, the Denmark Statistics uh, Statistik Bank, Statistics Bank, uh, which we're going to be using. Uh, so you just need to uh, uncomment this line and run this cell, basically, uh, to install that package. Uh, and then there's also a package called Pandas Data Reader, which is like it has a, a host of different APIs it can access. Uh, I'm going to show you a few of them, and then you can also mess around with it yourself. Uh, but you install that by using the pip magic here, uh, just running that cell. If I run it, then it says it's already installed. Uh, and it takes a bit of time. Um, we're going to be using uh, NumPy and Pandas, and then we're going to be using uh, Daytime a tiny bit. Uh, the Daytime package is just for uh, handling uh, dates, basically, in data. In pandas, uh, you can do it in a string where you have like or multiple variables with year, day, uh, month, and the uh, and time of day. But you can also use these date time variables, which are uh, once you get the hang of them, uh, they are nicer uh, and easier to use. Yeah, and then we're going to use the pandas data reader and DST API, uh, and then we're going to do some uh, plotting as well. Um, yeah. So uh, what is fetching data using an API? Uh, an API is an interface through which you can directly ask for and receive data from an online source. Uh, and you will not be directly handling the API, you will be using packages mostly that sort of um, communicate with the API and ask for the correct correct data and correct format. Um, so this, these two packages we've been talking about, which I'll show you today, there are many other packages uh, and you can even sort of communicate with an API yourself. That's a bit harder. I haven't uh, sort of uh, digged into that because usually if I need it, then there's somebody else who also needs it and they have already made the package. Uh, and yeah, because you are getting data from an online source, then you of course need an uh, internet connection on your computer. Uh, and if you want to work without an internet connection, then you just need to first fetch the data and then save it locally on your computer. Uh, and then you can work on it offline. Um, another thing you can use these APIs too is that you can sort of automate uh, data fetching. So, I mean, using an API instead of just going into demo statistics and downloading uh, the data you want is basically a convenience thing uh, and also a replication thing. Um, so, you could just like most of these pages, which has an API, also has like an, uh, a human interface where you can go in and click and download data. Uh, what's nice on, with an API is that you can automate a lot of things and you can also sort of redo exactly what you did last week, but this week there's updated data and then you can just download the updated data. You can also, if you need like a bunch of different data sets, then you can sort of also automate it uh, and make it more easier for you to download really many data sets instead of just going through, run through. So there's also one other thing is that uh, it's of course people and institutions sort of storing the data uh, or giving you access, yeah, storing it and giving people access to it. And they can at any point in time, they're sort of free to uh, say, we don't want to give you access to the data anymore. So if you want to make sure that you have it on your own computer, then you need to, or if you have it for yourself, then you need to store it on your own computer. Uh, yeah, to summarize, it's, it's automatic. Uh, it's typically smart, you can sort of repeat processes uh, many times. Uh, and if the, 
yes, packages that help you, then you can do everything from Python relatively easily. Uh, one con is that sort of you have to have an internet connection, and it can sometimes sometimes be slow, especially if there are many people accessing data uh, at one point in time. Uh, that's one of the nice things about having a video lecture is that uh, we won't get into this issue uh, uh, when you're watching the video as opposed to doing a physical lecture where everybody wouldn't be able to use the same APIs at once. Um, yeah, if you press this link, there will sort of be an, uh, a raw output data from an API, uh, an example of that and how it looks and it's basically just a bunch of raw text uh, which sort of, it has a structure, but it's very uh, difficult to see through that structure. Uh, and this is what many of these packages does, is sort of unpacking uh, that kind of text and making it into a, a format that uh, we know or like, uh, which in this case would be uh, pandas uh, data frames. Um, so the first example will be uh, importing data from the Denmark Statistics, uh, Statistics Bank, Bank, Statistics Bank. Uh, Denmark Statistics sort of makes a lot of aggregate, aggregated data about uh, Denmark available and they make it available for you to download manually but they also make it available through an API and uh, this very nice guy Alessandro Mantinello from the Danish National Bank has made a Python package to sort of help you deal with the API uh, that was the one that you pip installed earlier uh, yeah, there's a, a GitHub page, uh, and he also has his own uh, guide on how to use the API. I'll also show you uh, how to use it, uh, but you can also look through his notebooks. Um, yeah, uh, and of course the manual way of finding this data would be going to statistikbanken.dko. Uh, there is an uh, English version that's still called statistikbanken. That uh, and then you can sort of browse through all the data through the subjects. Uh, say I want to know something about labor and income, and then there's like a list of uh, different data sets that you want to maybe want to look at, uh, and there's descriptions of everything. Uh, yeah, and you should probably know that the uh, the package and the API in the statistics has an English option as well, but it's not that good, not everything is translated, so we'll, there will be some uh, Danish words today and I'll try to uh, translate the, uh, them. Uh, you shouldn't be discouraged from using the API, I think most of it is translated and the data itself is translated uh, and a lot of the stuff you can sort of get from context. Uh, so uh, how do we use this API? So for now we just uh, take this given, uh, I'll show you uh, some of the source code a bit quickly it's not really part of the course you just need to know how to use this API uh, so we uh, create an instance of the, of the DST API so it's an object that allows us to interact with the DST servers uh, we just create like this uh, I've forgotten to uh, import or run the import cell uh, and here's with, here we are choosing a data set name that we sort of can find in here. I think it's typically easier to look through what data is available by using this page, uh, which there was a link to in the lecture notebooks. This here, uh, and we are here. We're going into to labor and income and looking at income and earnings, and then we've chosen this in co p one hundred seven, which is income for people uh, who are older than fourteen years, and then you sort of by region uh, units or different types of income. Uh, or different sort of ways to, of counting uh, sex, uh, so gender and level of education and type of income. Uh, it's sort of more clear if you go into it what it means. Uh, so unit is counting the number of people with that type of income, the amount or the average and stuff like that. And the type is all, all these different ways of uh, having income. Uh, and then it sort of averages for whole of Denmark or for regions or for uh, for municipalities, uh, and you have a lot of years available, and you have different levels of location available. Uh, and you could go through here and just sort of pick some stuff, and then say show table. Okay, let's pick more stuff, uh, and then say show table, uh, and then you could download the data. If I'd pick more, chosen more options, then it would be actually data set. 
and you can download it as an Excel file and uh, or CSV file. Uh, but if you want many data sets or you want to be able to replicate the process, uh, then you want to do it with this API. So we create an instance or an object uh, of the TSG API uh, saying we want to look at this data set. Uh, you can use the table summary uh, method to sort of get a quick overview of the available data. So this is uh, pretty much the same as we had before and this is where sort of the Danish names comes in uh, in the variable name section where they're not translated. Uh, so you can sort of you can some of it you can get from the web page. Uh, but this this is area and then there's a sort of all the different available values that you can use. Then there's in there's unit and the gender. Uh, you can also get some of it from the context of this label because this is actual data which is translated. Um, yeah, and time is the is two uh, two is time uh, that's in the years available. And you also see so the first year available is 2004 and the last year available is 2021. Uh, yeah, and sort of this is uh, what kind of data you can select. Uh, so what kind of conditions you can have. And then you, we can sort of loop through uh, this table and uh, print out uh, the available values for each uh, of these variables. Uh, so you sort of say, okay, for the area, the umbrella variable, you can choose all of Denmark, you can choose one municipality, you can choose all the municipalities. And uh, this quick little loop sort of loop through those and prints out what's available, basically. So for umbrella, you have all these that are available. For unit, you have all these are available. For gender, you only have uh, three genders, very uh, old fashioned, or two genders. Um, yeah. Uh, and then you have uh, education, uh, there you have more, and then you have the type of income. Uh, and this sort of allows you to see what's available. And you just also you should know these IDs uh, are sort of nice. Oh, not nice, but they're very useful. Uh, we'll use them in just a second, because those are the ones that you'll actually be uh, using to sort of select what data you want out from the API. Uh, and to select what kind of data you want to load, uh, onto your uh, your uh, Python uh, kernel, uh, so what that kind of data you want to interact with. Uh, you first, an easy thing is to sort of create a uh, base parameter. You need, you need a, a dictionary with some parameters that selects data. Uh, and uh, the DST uh, object, API object, has a method, or the class has a method, <coughs> uh, that helps you do that. Uh, so this defined base parameter, and then choose that it sh should be in English. Uh, and that just changes uh, this one uh, language to set to English. Uh, and so this sort of parameter dictionary chooses what's the name of the table, uh, the way you want to download it, uh, I think you just keep it at bulk, uh, and sort of what variables you want to select. So what this does is so sort of for, for each uh, available variable, it selects all the available data. Uh, and this uh, is typically not the way to go because there's a lot of data you don't need. Uh, and then it's much better not to download it through the API uh, instead of downloading everything and then deleting stuff. It's just faster. Uh, so you can do this in two ways. You can sort of define this base parameters and then you can change it uh, directly. Uh, and what we want to do is we want to change this variable uh, key into selecting the data we want, basically. Uh, so just uh, changing uh, the first um, element in this list, uh, changing the values to something else. Uh, here we sort of, it's, it doesn't really matter what we're selecting, but you're using these IDs to select uh, things that we're selecting. Uh, and this is this is one way to do it, and it's sort of it's a bit more clear what you've changed, uh, but it's also a lot of code. So another thing you can do is just to sort of uh, copy paste what you printed out here uh, and uh, edit it manually. Sort of say, okay, I want this data set, and then you choose here what kind of values you actually want to get from the data set. Uh, 
uh, like this. So I've already done it down here. Uh, of course, you need to define it. Uh, uh, in order to create this dictionary. Whatever you want. Uh, one thing I should note is uh, this. So here you're just changing, okay, I want that one, I want that one, I want that one, I want that one. Uh, for the time, it's a bit easier to write this. Uh, you're saying I want all the years that are larger than 2008 or and smaller and equal, smaller or equal to 2014. It's not the, the, the most explicit syntax, uh, but it works. And you could also use them on these uh, ID stuff. So if you want uh, just the first columns here, then you would write, uh, you would actually not need, but you would write uh, larger than equal to than 100 uh, and uh, less than equal to 135, and then you would get these seven, uh, eight columns. Um, for example, uh, we could get all of these except they're not stated or something. Uh, yeah, uh, and that's how you write that out with this sort of, and it means and, uh, even though it's not explicit. Yeah. All right. So we write this uh, program dictionary, and then you just use the method get data, and then you uh, feed in the params. A dictionary that you've created, sort of edited, uh, and then we download the data. Um, yeah, and then you have it uh, as Ink API, and now you can sort of start uh, cleaning it and renaming it and all that uh, wonderful stuff and plotting it and uh, creating uh, crazy statistics that uh, give you new insight to how the world works. Uh, yeah, uh, but that's that's for another video. Uh, that's how that works. Uh, and right now you just have uh, this DST API stuff uh, as a package that you install to pip install. Uh, another thing that I don't recommend you do, but sort of shows you how this works, that is, it's just all Python code, is that you can actually go in through, uh, so I just copy this, uh, the GitHub page where the API is stored. Uh, okay already had it open uh, and it's actually just one Python script uh, there's some more code uh, to sort of help uh, help it works as a package but you can just copy this entire Python script um, so you see here we have an I've downloaded the ST API and then I can make a pi file here uh, which works uh, So I need to call it that pi. Uh, and then you use all the code that's already created. Just rename this as well. Uh, and then you can say, and then you can download it as a manual pi file, uh, as we've shown you with some of these uh, classes for solving models that we've shown you. Uh, in other videos, from import, let's call this T API user right. here. Ah, yeah, it should be. That's not really important. Uh, We don't have the automatic reload stuff in this notebook. Um, all right, now it works. And it works the exact same as, uh, as the pip installed module. Uh, so there you have it here, for example. Uh, and that's just to show you, and it's actually not that much code. Some of it is a bit hard to understand, but it's just to show you that these sort of packages uh, that people make uh, are sort of uh, 
somewhat human sometimes. Uh, maybe you won't be on, able to understand all of this. I think that the GitHub notebook goes a bit more specifically into what is what is happening, uh, how the package talks to the API, and how to sort of append uh, or sort of unwrap all of this data uh, coming from DST. Uh, but I mean, you could. It's only some 136 lines of code, so you could actually spend your time to understand what's happening here. Uh, and of course, the nice thing about having a pip package instead of having this py uh, file that you have to run around with is that you can uh, use it in so lo as long as you have it in your Anaconda environment, then you can use it all over the computer, all over the folders, uh, wherever you are. Uh, while with this py file, then you have to keep it with you and sort of uh, move it as you're uh, doing new stuff. Okay, so uh, let's get going. Uh, so you can also use the pandas data reader package. Uh, for example, it's just to show you how it works. You can uh, load data from uh, the Federal Reserve, which have a bunch of economic data. Uh, you need to tell it uh, that this is why we're using daytime variables. You need to tell it sort of which time span you want. Uh, so the way you create uh, a daytime. Uh, variable is you uh, say daytime that daytime there are multiple ways and then you are choosing year and month of and uh, day of the month um, pretty sure that's yeah day of the month um, and then if we change this then you could change it but this is 29 or something uh, yeah um, and yeah and, and these daytime variables not really uh, part of this lecture, but it's just to show you what they are, because uh, you need them for using the data reader stuff. Uh, so we use pandas.dataReader.data.data uh, reader, and we choose we want the G GDP statistics from Fred, and then you choose the starting point and the end point. Uh, there's a different way to do it uh, from the pandas data reader package, uh, and it's very nice sort of uh, when you're doing your data project, then you can go through, sorry, um, um, yeah, then you can uh, go into here uh, and uh, look at uh, the available uh, data sources. Uh, so here there are some there's some like explicit data readers, uh, a bit of documentation about how it works. Uh, so you can see there's an also an explicit method called Fred, but it, it works exactly the same way. Uh, and there are some examples. Uh, yeah. Uh, so we're choosing data from GDP and uh, or GDP data from Fred, uh, and uh, just plot it. Then you just so it's just a uh, has the GDP measure and the date. Uh, so how would you actually, how do we know we write in GDP and stuff like that? That's by going in here. Uh, and then we, if we serve for GDP, uh, then we get the GDP data. And then you can see here in the URL of the website, uh, it's called GDP. And that's sort of how you know what's called. It's also down here. We also search for something else. Uh, see, I've searched for rental vacancy rates. Uh, in the US. And it has a bit of a weirder name, uh, but it also works if you're using that. So I can sort of just replace it right here. And now it's no longer GDP data, it's the rental rate data. Uh, yeah. Uh, and of course, you would probably want to download multiple data sets. Uh, and then you can just do it in a loop and uh, 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 do it in loop and, and merge the data sets together on the date variable. Uh, yeah, you can also download multiple data sets in one go. Uh, that's what we have here. Uh, so we're taking data from 1939 to 2021 uh, on the aggregate employment and unemployment. Uh, so again, the way you would find these is to go into this T and say, want to find some employment data uh, all employees 
yeah, then you get all employees, total and farm. That's called payments, and uh, you can also find the other one. Sort of, you have to Google a bit uh, to find what you want. There's some like uh, topic stuff to help you, uh, but they have, like as you can see, like a bunch of data available. Uh, so you probably need to spend some time in the beginning just figuring out what you want. Uh, and then this small example here is just to show you like how easily so we download this data, and then we can plot it immediately. Uh, with the available uh, observations that we have. Uh, and you can see the employment data and uh, the unemployment data. Uh, and you can see how it sort of looks. Uh, you can see the financial crisis, uh, other smaller crises, stuff like that. Uh, yeah, and the plotting is uh, also talked about. Uh, in another video, but this is just uh, Pandas data frame has some methods and functions that it sort of access Matplotlib under the hood directly, so you can plot it really easily. Uh, yeah, and automatically gives it labels and stuff like that. Uh, yeah, another thing you can use uh, Pandas data reader for is uh, download data from uh, the World Bank. Uh, so. Yeah, this does the documentation. You can get like a bit more info on how it works. Uh, yeah. And here we also download something from uh, DDP, so GDP <laughs> data, uh, but from multiple countries. Uh, uh, and here we're showing you the explicit model. Uh, the FRED also has a module in Pandas Data Reader. Uh, but uh, and a lot of these data sources do, uh, which you can find here uh, under the remote data access thing. So for example, if you choose something, then it's sort of this one doesn't have its own. Uh, the thread also has uh, the World Bank has its own. Uh, yeah, that's not really important. It's the data reader uh, documentation will tell you how to do it uh, for each of these different data sources. Uh, yeah, so uh, we went into World Bank. Uh, we say we want some GDP data. Let me just write GDP. Uh, current US dollars. Uh, and then again, you get the name here in the URL. Uh, the name that we need to give uh, the API, so it knows where we're looking, uh, and you can also see sort of the countries available, stuff like that. Uh, yes, and how the World Bank data works is that you give this indica indicator from the uh, from the URL, and you choose the countries and the starting years and the end years. Uh, uh, and then the, the column will automatically have the same name as the URL, uh, so it's, you most likely want to rename that because most names are nonsensical. Uh, yeah, and it looks like this, and you can get some uh, info uh, out of it. Um, <coughs> uh, and this is typically when you download data from API, you want to check it, that it's correct, and it's the format you work in, want to work in. Uh, for example, here, the second variable year has been stored as an object, which is pandas sort of default type, uh, or not default type, but it's sort of its catch-all type. So there can be multiple types in this one, in the object, and there can also be strings. Uh, uh, we want to convert that to an integer, because year is an integer. Uh, typically, if you want to be I don't always do this, to be honest. But if you want to be clean about it, you should also uh, convert a country into a string uh, type. Uh, and you do that just by writing S type uh, string. So, so. It's, yeah, it's done down here. So I'll, I'll show you. Uh, I'll show you later. Uh, because in the object, there can also be missing objects, and so you're gonna. Some of them are strings, some of them are integers, and then can sort of mess up a lot of things later on. Uh, GDP is a float, uh, which we are happy about, because uh, that should be a floating point number. Uh, yeah, 
Uh, so how you do it is just to use this as type uh, method and then the type you want to convert it into. And see when you print out the info, then we get the, that the types have changed. Uh, so we actually also uh, spared a bit of memory. Uh, that's probably mostly coming from turning the years from strings into uh, integers. Uh, yeah, you could read a bit more about the object type in pandas here. Um, now data is the employment to population radio just to show you another example so now i mean the way you would do this in practice is you will write the first line first uh, print the data uh, and say okay some things are wrong here we want to change this name we want to reset the index and we already know uh, that the type that we're getting out is not the one we actually want, stuff like that. Uh, and then you write this code uh, afterwards, basically. Uh, yeah, so, so typically you don't know all of these things. Uh, so yeah, we download the data we want uh, from Sweden, Denmark, and Norway. We are uh, renaming uh, the column. We're resetting the index so it doesn't have uh, the country and year indexes. Uh, just because we don't want to deal with the multi-index because we're not using it uh, changing the type uh, of the year variable and then we're just plotting it out oh, printing it out uh, <coughs> yeah. uh, and then we can merge it with the other data uh, so the GDP data we downloaded uh, here we just use an, an auto merge because we want to sort of keep all the data available uh, on country and year uh, so you might have some places where you have employment data, but you don't have GDP data uh, in some countries in some specific particular years. Uh, yeah. Uh, and then you're sort of ready to go and maybe you want to download more data, but you're ready to plot some stuff and uh, show some stuff uh, about the GDP in, uh, in these uh, Nordic countries. Uh, yes. Uh, so a few other examples of open access APIs you can use for your data project and in your, your later life uh, is listed here. Uh, so as I've been showing you a little bit, the documentation on the Pandas data reader sort of has like a bunch of different data. There's also stock data if you want to go into that. Uh, there are some of these pages that I don't, I don't know what they are, but uh, maybe they, they have some interesting data. Um, so there's stuff like that. Uh, there's an API for, for COVID data. Uh, and there's, it all, yeah, there's an API for COVID data and then there's this Python package which helps you download it. Uh, maybe you're very tired of COVID uh, and don't want to look at it, but uh, I can get that. Uh, then there's this kind of funny, the National Museum of Art, Danish National Museum of Art also has an API to access uh, all their available data. Uh, I think this is really uh, non-economic, but it's quite uh, interesting. Uh, so you look at their exhibits and stuff like that, uh, and the information they have about the, the art, uh, which could be a fun project, I think. Uh, NASA, NASA <laughs> has its own API. Uh, uh, yeah, they, they have documentation, and then there's also Python. Uh, package that can help you deal with it. Uh, some other, a bit more far out sources. So there's a, a GitHub repo which has like a list of all, all like a bunch of public APIs. It's probably gonna take a bit of time to sort of get through everything. Uh, and you don't shouldn't shouldn't get through everything. But if you're looking for something, then that will maybe help you. There's a data site behind uh, a news article site, uh, 538. Uh, you can get that their data. Then there's also, uh, you can get IMDb uh, movie data uh, and sort of see the ratings and the different genres and stuff like that. Uh, there was a project uh, using this data uh, some years back. Uh, it was kind of funny. Uh, I remember they tried sort of predicting how to get the best rating uh, conditioning on genre and stuff like that. Uh, but uh, I'm sure there's more to do with this data. Uh, yeah. Uh, so, uh, yeah.
I think that was it for this video. Uh, that was all I wanted to show you. Uh, I hope you have a, a great time with these ABIs. You can really get some fun data uh, down.